It's the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome to the Monday edition of the Mike Prince Show. We come to you each and every day right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our social media handles, of course, for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are all at the Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is Open Mic Broadcast Network. The website, obnradio.com, and our 24-hour dial-in message line, 713-570-6736. And without any further delay, we're going to jump right into today's episode. Well, people are still buzzing in disbelief of the Celebration Bowl that was between North Carolina A&T and the Alcorn State Braves. Still trying to figure this thing out. And before we go any further, we'd like to welcome to the family of the Open Mic Broadcast Network, B.J. Jones. He'll be featuring the Sports Lounge here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, 7.30 p.m. on Sunday nights. Have an hour of truly informative and in-depth information coming from B.J. Jones. And we're very excited to have him on board with us. We're a live show. Here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, of course, you can listen to the Carlos Brown Show on Saturdays from 10 to 12 noon. Miss Sandra Stance, which she says she says sports, along with a couple of other insights that we're working on. So our network is building, as they would say, the brand is expanding. It's due to guys like yourselves who join in with us each and every day. We try to give you a wide, diverse approach to the unique world of HBCU sports coverage and beyond. Keep it locked here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Don't forget we're on Tuned In Radio. We have a 24-hour live radio stream. We also have the Mike Prince Show available on the Tuned In Radio platform as well as various other platforms. So it's the network that keeps on giving. And also, we want to extend a congratulations to Coach Donald Ely. Donald Ely received an extension over the weekend at Alabama State. So that's always a good thing. Last year this time, we were wondering, would he be the first one on the chopping block because of the situation that was up at Alabama, or should I say down at Alabama State? Well, I guess it's up if you're looking from Texas. Either or, he's being rewarded for keeping the Hornets competitive and headed in what appears to be the right direction. And speaking of heading in the right direction, as you revisit the East of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Alcorn losing 26 seniors at the end of the Celebration Bowl due to graduation and eligibility expiration. 26 seniors, that's nothing to blink at. And the mentality has always been next man up at Alcorn State. Now, a lot of people are somewhat jumping on Alcorn, and that's not necessarily the angle, at least that I'm taking here from the Open Mic Broadcast Network. My position is this. Alcorn, hands down, has been the best program in the Southwestern Athletic Conference results related for the past six years. And the very best that we at the Southwest Athletic Conference had to offer lost 64 to 44 due to whatever circumstances that unfolded, plays that were called, plays that were not called, situations and circumstances that had it. This was the very best that we had to represent the Southwest Athletic Conference and any and everyone beforehand, at least the people that I communicated with, agreed that the right team was there to represent the Southwestern Athletic Conference. On the MEAC side of things, there was a little 
controversy, if you would. FAMU declaring that they were the undisputed champs because of infractions. They did a self-imposed post-ban restrictions on their program. And with that being said, the best team from the MEAC was North Carolina A&T because they were in compliance and eligible for the bowl. Yes, a phenomenal year for FAMU. You cannot take that away. But FAMU were not the team eligible to represent the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. With that being said, North Carolina A&T did not <laughs> misrepresent the conference with the performance that they had this past Saturday. So maybe the little juggernaut in Twitter world will continue on from FAMU and company saying, well, we beat North Carolina A&T. We beat South Carolina. We beat Southern and anybody else that came in our way. Bravo and job well done. But as we stand here on this day, North Carolina A&T will go down in the record books of being the 2019 HBCU college football champion. And with that being said, what does that say to those who remain back in the Southwestern Athletic Conference? Alcorn, although this year was somewhat of more of a challenge of them getting to the championship game, but they were able to weather the storms and get it done, which obviously means that they had enough amongst the Southwestern Athletic Conference to rise above. As they say, the cream always rises to the top. So when I look at this in a realistic set of glasses, all corn is the role model, the formula for the Southwestern Athletic Conference to get it done. Whether you're from Prairie View, Pine Bluff, Southern, Gramlin, Jackson State, Texas Southern, Mississippi Valley, I want to make sure I get everybody in here so no one will say I'm casting shade. Regardless of whom you're representing, look in the mirror of what the respective programs need to do to get over not only the all corn hump, but the non-conference outside of SWAC hump. When we look at the full body of work, we are definitely going to have to step our game up. That's not a knock on any program but it's a reality check that in order to get up to the next level, we're going to have to operate in that of the next level. Now, I've been on this tangent about styles of play and schemes of play. You know, that's a coaching's choice. Whatever you want to do, that's that's on that level. That's, you know, a whole nother bed of roses to discuss. But we're going to have to work through what I'm calling this journey road segment of the conference. We're about to embrace 100 years as a conference, and we have a lot of history, a lot of true, honorable heritage. But then we also have to work toward the future. We have to start building that future right now. And when we look at it, we talk about the prestige of the conference. We talk about the respect of the conference. We talk about the credibility of the conference. And anyone that is SWAC related, knowing what's at stake, no matter which institution you're representing, you're knowing that we are going to have to step our game up. That is not to take away from the success 
that Alcorn has had is not to take away the success that Southern has had, Grambling, Jackson State, Prairie View, whomever. The real deal, rubber to the roll question is do you believe your team would have done better against a North Carolina A&T? And I'm honestly saying I don't think so. So then we're going to have to change something. You can't put it all on coaching. You can't put it all on student athletes. You can't put it all on administration. And you can't put it all on the fan base. It is a combination of things that must be addressed. And here is something that I am strongly adamant about. It is nonsense for us as the Southwestern Athletic Conference members to say we do not care about the FCS playoffs. And we can keep that position and we can maintain that stance. But it shows that we don't care when we play other FCS programs that fit on our non-conference schedules or when it comes to postseason play. And if we want to be still affiliated with the FCS status through the NCAA, then we're going to have to build our programs to such a manner. It makes no sense to pay the dollars that it takes to stay in the FCS community. And you're not going to operate in the standards of the LCS community. Either you're in or you're out. It's really that simple. Now, I know that some of us that will be hearing this program today will say, well, Mike, it's easier said than done. Um, bravo, I understand that. It's called life. That's why we have target goals. That's why we have strategic plans to build and head in a new direction. And it starts right now. It starts right now. It starts with the recruiting. It starts with the scheduling. It starts with the coaching. It starts with the administrative philosophies. It starts with the endorsement of our chancellors. It starts with all of those things. And it's something that, in my opinion, is at the state of emergency point now. Oh, Mike, it's only athletics. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. But had you heard the numbers as a result of the athletic success at North Carolina A&T? The enrollment enhancement, which increases your funding, which increases prestige for the said institutions. Now, we can continue to act like it does not matter, and it might not matter to you individually, but it matters to the rest of those collectively who are outside looking in on how things are being operated from A to Z. Meanwhile, in the other world of FCS playoffs, James Madison and North Dakota State We'll be meeting in Frisco, Texas, January 11th for the championship game. North Dakota State had a little bit over 18,000 people in attendance to watch them roll into the victory circle heading toward the championship. While at James Madison, it was just a shade shy of the 10,500 people to watch them take care of business. And those two will meet, as we mentioned, in Texas, January the 11th. And since we're talking about attendance, it was reported for this 2019 Celebration Bowl, just a shade under 33,000. In fact, the number was something like 32,963 people, which is a great number. That could also be better. That game is held 
in what has been dubbed as the Mecca for African American, the hotbed for HBCU sports. Although there are no institutions from the MEAC nor the SWAC that's in the Atlanta, Georgia area, the closest one used to be Savannah State, but they since dropped back down to Division II. What can be done to help infiltrate the Atlanta community to help push the attendance to 50,000? I'm interested to see the ratings that will come out for this game. I'm pretty sure it did well on television. We even had some good numbers from our audio broadcast of that event here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. So I know the numbers were up all around, but it's going to be very interesting to see the bottom results. Meanwhile, back at the camp, Swag Nation, it's time to rise. It's time to look at the man in the mirror and make that change. We got a lot more coaches lined up. We're going to be hearing from Mr. Greg Seitz, the FCS committee chair for playoff selection. Get his viewpoints of the late scheduling of the championship game coming up this week. I've got to go. My time has come where I must exit stage left. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Want to thank you guys as always for joining us. Don't forget, check us out on YouTube and leave your thoughts, questions, and comments on our message line at 713-570-6736. You guys be blessed and we'll see you on the other side.